So you have to gather yourself and travel out into the unknown with only your wits, your survival skills, and anything that you can loot. And I love to loot. So at first, you're into it. And it was kind of cool that this is a more hardcore RPG. So that it forces you to do things like put away your weapon if you want to pick something up, or cook your own food, or pick Looks berries. Good. It has an unlimited storage system. There's no weight limit to all the stuff that you can loot. So you can pretty much just grab anything that isn't nailed down. Unfortunately, it commits the worst offense, the cardinal sin. It's boring. Boring weapons, boring armor, and boring loot. And without an interesting story and not a single unique, memorable character, there's not much point. I mean, honestly, at one point this master who was going to teach me combat wanted me to sweep 10 dust piles in his room. Stellar Quest, by the way, it was all epic like this. Well, at least it would have been had I cared, but I couldn't even find his damn room. Apparently, he meant, and the quest text meant, that he wanted me to sweep 10 piles up all around the compound, not his room. And I would have known that had the crap map and quest system bothered to point it out to me. Am I being unfair by picking out one of the busy quests? Well, no, because for me, it was one of the most memorable. It was frustrating and mundane. But okay, okay, they're not all like that. They're mostly hit or miss. There's even one where you sell weed. Yeah, drugs. You were forced to become a drug dealer to loot out a killer. Hey, man. Hey, man, are you looking for some stuff, man? I got it all, buddy. I got green alien, I got circle poppies, I got fucking goji berries, I got fucking watermelon mangoes, man. I got what you need, man. You want us some, oh, I know what you want. You want some weed. Interested in some weed? Um, uh, actually, I'd better not. You want to smoke a little, huh? I got you. Quiet. I'm thinking. But I will say one thing about the game. It has a massive amount of dialogue. But it's mostly just small talk that tends to drag on forever. And save often, because if you go on a quest and get killed, you're gonna have to go back to that quest giver and go through all of his dialogue options over and over and over. Just shut up. Just give me the damn quest. Well, the number's 555-905. Wait a minute, that's my old number. That is so weird how your mind just goes blank. For God's sake, just give me the damn number! This game taught me that just because there is a massive amount of content does not make... No, never mind. That, that exploit is actually a good thing in this game because it allows you to release your frustration that you've built up in this game. You just put up the enemy and just go... Fuck up, shut up, shut up. Yeah. Shh. It's a technical mess. Every time you kill a single enemy, the whole game freezes, even if it's one enemy out in the middle of a field. It freezes for half a second for every single death blow. And if anything big happens, oh forget it, I, I, the frame rate drops instantly. Which makes no sense because the graphics are below average, they're subpar. I mean, look at this stuff, look. Oh, come on, now, you're not even trying, you're just being lazy now, look. Uh, original Xbox, the PlayStation 1 doesn't even do this. It looks terrible, and to hide all of this, they put most of the game in the dark, which you can't see anything in, and there's no gamma control. Oh yeah, that's right, no gamma control, you know what, I am sure of it. I am sure of it now, that this is just some, they're trying to piss us off with some cruel experiment. This is like the promise of cheese, except for with no cheese. Just nothing. It tries to mock you.
Getting to your map is insanely overcomplicated because it's hidden under a bajillion button presses. Now look at this, watch. Every time I want to see where the hell I'm going, I have to open up the inventory screen with one of the D-pads. So I press over on the D-pad, it always ends up being the wrong one. I gotta press up, down, left, or right. You gotta press left. So you press left to open up the screen. Then in the left window, you have to make sure that you have it set to the correct area or faction. So you move over with the stick and now you gotta select the quest because it doesn't save what last quest you're on. It just opens and you gotta select the quest. So then you go down and select the quest. So then you move over to this screen and then you go, okay, let me hit the shoulder buttons to get the right region of the map. You go from the world map to the region map to the quest map. And then when you're on the quest map, you, all you get is a golden arrow that you can't even see. You can't see it. It's hidden. And the only things marked on your map are the quest giver, not exactly the objectives or where you need to go. Uh, then as soon as you're done looking at your map, you close your inventory screen and an animal starts to beat the out of you, which spins you around and now you don't know where you go, so you gotta do it all over again. What a piece of That's what it is! It makes me so mad that I had to play through this entire game for you. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to come up with positive things about this game. Uh, so, so let's do that here. I, I liked how it was kind of hardcore at the beginning, you know, picking up berries, picking up branches, hitting animals with sticks, and, and trying to stay alive, and cooking your food. Uh, but, and then, but then that just got tedious with all the, of the annoyances that appears later. Okay, okay, maybe 20 hours in when you get to start to use magic, there's some pretty funny looking spells like levitation. Like you're riding a magic carpet, and there's also uh, the transformation skill that puts you in and, and transform you into little snail slug bug, and you get to go into these little cracks. Those are cool spells, and, and with the Xbox, there's some easy achievements. Uh, oh. But all of that is just not really worth enduring everything else to get to that. And that's why this game gets a final verdict of 3 out of 10. This is a poor effort. And it's lucky that I didn't rate it lower, because there is a massive amount of content, over 60 hours of gameplay, but the question is, will you even want to go through all of it? And it's particularly sad because there are some cool ideas in here that just were not executed well at all. The whole thing is overshadowed by technical issues, a punishing level up system, and a relatively boring storyline. Again, maybe it's from a small team of developers, but that's not our problem. There's no sense in making excuses, and there is no excuse for the counterproductive interface. Now when this one goes to the bargain bin, which it will, maybe you could pick it up to see what it's like to better appreciate some of the other Western RPGs that are out there. But other than that, just, just stay away from this game. I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe show. Sounds pretty fucking simple to me. <laughs>